Welcome back to Statistics with Mr. Robeson. Today we're going to take a look at histograms and see how they're different from bar graphs. We're going to go over skew and we're going to describe histograms. So we're going to cuss. All right, so histograms and bar graphs. So on the right here is a bar graph. On the left here is a histogram. So the difference between the two, well, they look kind of similar to me. They all have these bars. It looks like on the histogram, there's no space between the bars. And in the bar graph, there's space between the bars. Second thing I notice is that on the bar graph, it looks like we're broken up into categories. I don't know what these categories are, but it looks like we're broken up into some sort of categories. And in the histogram, these are all numerical values. So that means we're using quantitative data here in the histogram and categorical data in the bar graph. That's really the main difference between the two is the type of data, all right? With the histogram, we have to decide how long we want our bars to be, all right? That has a name that is called the bin width or the class width. It looks like for this, we're going from 55 to 60, 60 to 65, 65 to 70, and so on. So it looks like our bin width here is five. With the bar graph, we don't have to do that because it's categorical data. You're just counting the frequency in each one. So again, the y-axis here is frequency. The y-axis here is frequency. So they're both similar in that way. All right. So that is the difference between histograms and bar graphs and their similarities. A quick note. Usually when we make these bins, we include the first number. So like 65s would be included in this count. But the last number, 70 here, would not be in this section. would be in the next section. All right. On the AP exam, they will tell you which way to do it. All right. So a question, if I want to make a graph that counts the number of people with each color of hair, which would work best? All right. So which graph would we use if we're going by color of hair? All right. Well, color of hair is a categorical variable. All right. So that's a category. There's our variable is the color of hair, and that is categorical. So since it's a categorical variable, we're going to use a bar graph. If I wanted to make a graph with the ages of all the teachers at Oakland High School, which would work best? So we'd go around and ask every teacher their age. There might be a little bit of response bias there because some people would lie about their age. I know I'm somewhere near 300 by now. Let's see, lying about their age. So which graph would work best? All right, so ages are going to be quantitative data. So, so since we're getting this quantitative data and we want to organize it, that's going to fall into a histogram. All right, so we went over this in class the other day. If you were there, so skewing, so skewed right, and then this is shape. So when we're doing our cussing, this is what we do for shape, one of the things we can talk about. Skewed right means the mean is greater than the median, all right? It's gonna have a tail to the right. So like the graph's gonna have some sort of shape and then it's gonna have extra data off to the right. See, to the right, skewed right. All right, so what ends up happening is these couple of large values up here, see most of our data is back here, between 20 and 40 for this graph, the best actress Oscar winners by age. All right. But these values up here towards the end are going to take this mean age and pull it up above the median. I believe the median is somewhere in here. We could count the, the number of people if we really wanted to. But the mean is being dragged up here because of all these couple of high numbers up here. They're going to pull it up. So that makes it skewed to the right. So if we know it's skewed right, like if we're told it's skewed right, then we know the mean is greater than the median. So we can go backwards too. If we do the calculations and we get that the mean is greater than the median, then we can go backwards and say it's skewed right. So we can go either way on this. Skewed left, opposite way. So the mean here is going to be less than the median. All right. So it's exactly the other direction. So skewed left is going to have a tail to the left, and then the rest of the data is going to be over here. So this has an extra tail over to the left side. All right. And in this one, the low values, we could also say it's skewed towards the low values, so the low values down here are going to pull the median down. So if I remember from this, the median for this class was somewhere around right here. And the mean was somewhere down here. 
All right, so the mean here is below. It is less than the median. So that makes that skewed left. You can see there's kind of a, and it goes up, and then it goes up a lot, and then it goes back down. Oops. All right, but the tail is over towards this left side down here. And right side over there. All right, so if the mean and the median are really close to each other, like there's no obvious tail on either side, or there's a tail on both sides, so you can either have the data kind of look like that, or you can have a tail, a middle, and then another tail. That's fine. It doesn't have to be exactly symmetric. And again, I'm making these curves. Most of the time, they're going to be bars. All right. Then we can say it's roughly symmetric. All right. We don't ever really want to say it's exactly symmetric. We pretty much always just say it's roughly symmetric, or it appears to be symmetric. We add that extra word in there just to be safe. All right. So uh, describing graphs. So again, we want to cuss and BS whenever we describe a graph. So we've gone over this before. Cuss stands for center unusual shape and spread. So center is the mean or the median. Don't say the center of the graph is this. Say the median is this or the mean is that. Usually you can calculate the median, not too difficult. The mean, we probably don't want to say that unless they give it to us. Uh, unusual, a lot of times you're going to say there's nothing unusual. Right? But if there is a gap, say there's a gap between this number and that number. If there's an outlier, that you've calculated to be an outlier, which we haven't gone over yet, and we can say there's an outlier. If we have not calculated, we have to say there appears, or there may be an outlier. All right, shape. So now we've gone over symmetric, and we've gone over skewed right and left. We've also talked about uniform. Uniform would be a graph that looks like that. All the data, every single value, or all the bars are the same height. We have not really gone over bell curves yet. Unimodal means it's got one hump. Bimodal means it's got two humps. And so you can pull those out. But really what they want is symmetric, skewed right, screwed left at this point. And spread. So far we've gone over range. So we can talk about the range. We can go from the smallest number to the biggest number. We haven't done standard deviation yet or variance yet. And remember to be specific. That means to include context. So don't forget to BS in at least one of these parts. All right, so here is an example. Analyze the histogram. This is the price of a t-shirt at various websites. So we went on various websites and said, what was the price of a t-shirt? So some of the designer brands had like, you know, upper $40 t-shirts. A lot of the other cheaper brands just had, you know, five, nine dollar t-shirts, that sort of stuff. All right, so this is one to 10 and it looks like there are 20 shirts in here. It looks like there's 21 here. Um, this is between 10 and 15 and a little closer to 15. So looks like 13 websites there between 5 and 10, a little closer to 10. So I'm going to guess 8. And this looks like 4. On the AP exam, if you get one of these numbers a little bit off, that's okay. They'll, they'll say that's okay. So let's see. We've got 20 plus 21 plus 13 plus 8 plus 4 gives us a total of, let's see, 4. 16, 6 carry the 1, looks like we've got 66 shirts, so 66 plus 1 gives us 67, 67 divided by 2 gives us 34, or sorry, 33.5, so we're looking for where's the 33rd and 34th shirt, well, we start at this end, we got 20, by the time we get to there, that's 41, so that means the, the median is going to be in here. I don't know if it's closer to 11 or 20, but we can just say it is between 11 and 20. So we start with our cussing. So we start with our center. We say the median. And I'm going to go ahead and include my context right here. Price of a t-shirt is, I'm not going to, I don't know what it is, but it is between 11 dollars and twenty dollars all right so if i don't know what it is exactly i can just say between that happens a lot when we're working with the histogram here unusual all right we don't have any outliers like there's no gap between bars so we're going to say that there is nothing unusual all right it doesn't hurt just to say that so just say that please all right shape well, we're up here, and then we've got the tail over on this side. So if we kind of just 
boop, up then, hit down, down, and down. So it looks like the tail is off to the right. So we can say that this is skewed right. I don't even have to put it in a sentence. I can just say skewed right. And spread. Well, looks like we're going from $1 to $50. However, we don't know if there's any $1 shirts. Maybe these were all $9 and $10 shirts here. And we don't know if there's any $50 shirts. Maybe these are all $41 shirts. So if we want to talk about the data values, we don't want to say the minimum is 1 and the maximum is 50 because we don't know that. All right, but what we can say is that the range is at most, so the most it could possibly be is 50 minus the 1, which would be 49. All right. If we wanted to go the other way, we could say that the range is at least... So the smallest value it could be would be if the, all these shirts were $41 and all these shirts were $10, would be 41 minus 10, which is going to give us 31. So somewhere between 31 and 49. All right, and that's cussing. Notice we use context on the first one, so we didn't have to on all the rest of them. All right, another example, describing the histogram. So now our graph looks almost exactly opposite of what it was last time. So this is the hour spent playing video games on the weekends. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of hours spent playing video games on a weekend. Over two days, almost more than a full day. All right, so we're looking at center first. So we need to find our median. So we count two there, three there, four there, seven there, nine there. This one you can be exact. We know all the numbers exactly. So we've got 9 plus 7 is 16, 20, 23, 25. So our n here, our sample size is 25. So 25 plus 1 is 26. Divide that by 2 is 13. So the 13th data value from either end will get us the median. So we got 9 plus 7 more. We're past 13. So our median is going to be somewhere in here. All right, so we say the... Median, and we're going to throw in our context right here. Hours spent playing video games on the weekend is between 15 hours and I say that's 19.99 hours. If we wanted to say 20 hours, that would be fine as well. But the median is somewhere in that section. We just don't know where it is. All right, unusual. All right, we don't have any gaps. We don't have any outliers as far as we can tell. So we're going to just go ahead and say nothing unusual. Shape. Okay, so we start high and we're going just down over here, down, down, down. So that means we are skewed towards this side over here with these values. So that is to the left. So we're going to say we are skewed left. And for spread, again, we don't know the minimum is zero. Hopefully it is, but we don't know. It's somewhere between zero and 4.99. The maximum is somewhere between 20 and 24.99. So we're going to go ahead and say the range is at most... And it'd be 24.99 minus 0, which is 24.99. And that is hours. All right. We could also say the other way around. The range is at least, let's see, the least would be if all these were 20s and all these were 4.99. So it'd be 20 minus 4.99, which is 15.01 hours. So either one of these is okay. I would probably just say the top one, but the bottom one works too. All right. So some questions about histograms. So can we look at this and find the median? All right. So if you want to work this out, go ahead and just pause it, do some counting, find the median. All right. I'm going to start. So there's one there. Looks like five. Looks like that's 14. This looks like six, six, seven, is that two? And back to another five. That's got to be a four. 
That's got to be another one. So they get 6, 20, 32, 39, 41, 46, 50, 51. Hopefully I counted right. Plus another one gives us 52. Divide by 2 gives us the 26th value. So we have 5. Would be the closest to our answer there. All right, our skew here, though, that's a little easier to tell. So I'll give you a minute or two to think about what's the shape of this graph. How is the median and the mean going to work? All right, so if I had to guess, I would say the median here is going to be less than the mean. All right, the median is going to be somewhere around here. The mean is going to be pulled over this way in some direction. So that means it is skewed towards the right. All right, so we said, so what is the mean of this graph? So we said that the median was about 525, and we said that it's skewed to the right, so that means it must be above 525. All right, so we looked at histograms and bar graphs, we looked at skewing, and we talked about how to describe histograms or how to cuss with histograms. So next time we're gonna compare some histograms and we'll look at relative frequencies. See you later.